Hey guys, it's Amber. Welcome to my Daniel Smith watercolor swatchbook series. In this series, I will focus on one Daniel Smith color and mix it with all the other colors in my palette to create these swatchbook pages. Today is part two, where we mix and swatch the colors on these entangled journal page from part one. If you missed part one, draw with me. I'll link it in the top right hand corner. Part three is paint with me where I sketch a balloon flower and I'll paint it with the watercolors that I mixed today. Subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss part three. Okay, this is the base drawing that we're gonna be working with today and this is in a moleskin watercolor album. I have a five by seven palette here that has 21 wells. Um, this is from Jackson's Art and they actually do have a 28 well palette, which would go perfect with my watercolor palette here, but it's currently out of stock. So I'm gonna grab that when it's available. This is my art toolkit pocket palette and these palettes are customizable. I decided to buy it with 28 empty mini pans. So I've re-wet my watercolors with um, just a spritzer of water. What we're going to mix and swatch today is Daniel Smith Thalo Turquoise. Now this pocket palette has 28 pans, so 28 colors in it. So I'm gonna mix Thalo Turquoise with 29 other Daniel Smith colors. So the 27 other colors in this palette, and then I have two more in another palette. So I'm gonna start off by dabbing two dabs of the Thalo Turquoise into each one of these wells and those empty spaces up at the top. And I'll just mix the last two colors in, in the palette itself. So I have this empty spot right underneath my header. And what I wanna put here is the mass tone or the full strength of the Thalo Turquoise and then do a gradient to kind of wash it out to a lighter color. I wanna make sure that I have a swatch of Thalo Turquoise by itself somewhere on this journal page. So for the first five of these studies that I did, I didn't do that. And so then I kind of was sitting there wondering, okay, well, what does that color look like all on its own? So let's talk paper. So as I said, this is a moleskin watercolor album. I have tried a couple of these watercolor albums and what I find is due to the sizing of the paper or the coating that they put on it, the watercolor beads up. It doesn't absorb the same as it would with a just a regular um, watercolor paper. I've tried a few different brands and had the same results. So I think I'm just going to buy large sheets of watercolor paper and cut them to this size and then bind it after I'm done with all of these swatches. Here I've just mixed Buff Titanium, which is an unbleached white. So this is an opaque paint. Um, if you are someone who loves transparent colors, then Buff Titanium may not be for you, but I think it is a really cool color and it definitely has its uses. It's just really up to, it just depends on what you guys like to paint. Um, I bought 28 colors because I didn't know anything about mixing colors. So I wanted a good range of colors. But then as I started to use those, even though I had 28 colors, I started to get a little bored and decided that it was time for me to start mixing these to see what else I could come up with. This is Hansa Yellow Light. So in my palette, this is my cool yellow that I have and it makes gorgeous colors, you guys. This is a super vibrant, bright, clear color. What I do find is that they're not very natural colors. So when you mix something with Hansa Yellow Light, you're not necessarily gonna get a natural color. Um, and this is Naples Yellow. Naples Yellow is probably my favorite yellow. This, this one is also a little opaque. Um, it's a neutral yellow. It's not quite cool. It's not quite warm. It's right in the middle there. It's like the Goldilocks of yellow. So far, this is my sixth um, study, color mixing study here. And I have loved every color that I've mixed with Naples yellow so far. Moving on to New Gamboge. This is the warm yellow in my palette. And New Gamboge mixes beautifully with almost every color you put it with as well. I think it's a great mixing color. It's a pretty standard warm yellow in most watercolor palettes. Um, so it's a pretty safe bet if you're looking for a warm yellow. This is Pyro Orange and it had a little bit of another color on it so I'm just cleaning that off. Pyro Orange is kind of like an orange soda color, like an Italian soda. It is a really pretty color. You would never know that from this swatch because when you mix it with Thalo Turquoise, it's like mixing two secondary colors together. You're gonna get this brown here. 
I think this would be a really pretty brown for like a forest scene or landscapes, maybe even um, animals, mushroom colors. It's, it's really a nice natural brown. I like it a lot. It's really too thick here because I had too much of the pyro orange on my brush. So I'll go and try and remove some of that in just a minute. Moving on to quinacridone coral. Quinacridone coral sits right between my orange and my warm red and it's a beautiful color all on its own. I have that mixed up in my swatch card up at the top. It's actually the last color on the top row. This is Pyrrole Scarlet, and I have all of the colors um, labeled on the palette there. I know it's small, but I felt like to pop up a color every time I mixed a new color would be really distracting and would get in the way of you guys seeing. So that's why I've labeled the palette like it is. So Pyrrole Scarlet is the warm red in my palette. It's also a beautiful mixing color. This color is gorgeous. It's like a dusty maroon, super pretty. So here I just have a wet brush and I'm trying to lift off a little bit of this Pyrrole Scarlet mixture because it was just so thick. It's hard for me to tell what that would look like um, washed out. Um, that's another thing, like I can't just like drop the paint onto this paper and let it spread it doesn't really move very well so that's another reason why I want to kind of do this with my favorite watercolor paper um, and move away from the the notebook you could see it beat it up there um, so this is quinacridone rose somebody asked me one of my viewers asked me recently what are my top 12 colors I don't know yet because I haven't been using my paints long enough but I do have a short list and on my short list of about five colors is quinacridone rose that might be one of the most beautiful mixing colors that there is so beautiful i love this paint this one that i'm doing now is pyrrole crimson that's my cool red and that's also a really pretty color i like that one a lot next up is quinacridone violet you may have noticed that i have quite a few of the quinacridones in my palette and that is because quinacridones are known to be very vibrant clear and transparent these are just really pure colors i also tried to buy a majority of single pigment colors where there's just it's a color made of just one single pigment um, whereas sap green is a mixture of a couple different colors they call that a convenience color because it's already mixed for you um, so if you like really transparent watercolors, if you like really vibrant colors, then I would definitely check out the quinacridones. The pyrroles are also um, really pigmented colors. That's the other thing about the quinacridones, they're super pigmented. You get a lot of color payoff in just a small amount of paint. This is quinacridone purple. And I have to be honest, it's harder for me to tell with the blues and the purples whether they're cool or warm. I'm pretty sure though that quinacridone violet is my warm purple and quinacridone purple is my cool purple, though I could have that wrong. The next color I'm mixing is indigo, which is just a gorgeous color. It goes with everything. It's just one of those go-to colors that probably will make my top 12 list. Hey, if you guys are getting value out of this video, please show your support by hitting that like and subscribe button down below if you haven't already. It really helps me out and allows me to keep making more content like this. So back to indigo. Indigo would be really pretty. Um, if you put some indigo down and you dropped a little bit of the buff titanium in it, that's really pretty. It would also go really well with like a yellow ochre or a red transparent oxide, even a green gold. All of those I think would be beautiful color combinations. So here I'm just kind of working at this because it's going onto the page weird and I, I want it to look somewhat good when it's finished. Um, and so the next color is Mayan dark blue. There is also a Mayan blue genuine that we'll do in the next row of colors. The Mayan blue genuine, that's not the one we're doing now, is a Primatech. The Mayan dark blue isn't Primatech. I find that it has, they're similar colors, but I find that the Mayan dark blue, the one that I'm doing now, has more color payoff. It seems to be darker and more pigmented. It does have some granulation to it. It's a really pretty color. The Mayan blue genuine is a little lighter. It doesn't have quite as much pigmentation, but it granulates beautifully because it's a Primatech. So it's actually a ground up stone. So the last color on this row is Endenthrone Blue. 
and you can see it up top it's the last one on the second row on the swatches up top and it's a very inky color um and this is again where i get really confused about what is a warm blue and what is a cool blue because to me in my world before getting into all of this watercolor stuff blue is just a cool color right no, not true. <laughs> it's, and I think really you can't necessarily ask someone, is that a warm blue or is that a cool blue? I think it makes more sense to think about it relative to what's in your palette. So right now I am putting down French Ultramarine, the mixture with French Ultramarine. French Ultramarine compared to Indian, Indian Throne Blue, absolutely a cool color. So now that I have French Ultramarine down, I would say that my Indian Throne Blue is a warm blue and the French Ultramarine is a cool blue. So I really just have to look at it in relation to the other colors to kind of figure that out. I, a couple of people have asked me or said that they're confused by that. Yeah, so am I. I'm figuring it out. We can all figure it out together. This that I'm putting down now is the Thalo Blue Green Shade. The phthalo colors are also super crazy pigmented, you guys. So a little goes a long way with those colors. So use caution when you're painting with the phthalos. The one I'm doing right now is the Mayan Blue Genuine that I was talking about earlier. So this is a Primatech color. So this is the ground up stone. And this one granulates so beautifully. Unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to see that very well on this paper. But as I said, we'll correct that with the next study of these that we do. So now this is, I'm going to skip over the phthalo turquoise. What would have been that middle color on that row was phthalo turquoise, but we've already swatched that up at the top. So I moved on to Amazonite Genuine. This is another Primatech color. Um, this is another one that's not as pigmented as like the phthalo turquoise, let's say. But I think that there is a place for it in my palette because like I said, the phthalos are super pigmented. A little goes a long way, so you could very easily overwhelm your painting. Whereas if I needed a teal that was a little more toned back and possibly a little easier to work with, I might choose the Amazonite Genuine. This mixture is the Sap Green. Look how pretty that is, you guys. I think that's gorgeous. I love the Sap Green and the Thalo Green. The one that I did before that was Viridian. And Viridian is definitely in my top 12. It mixes beautifully with so many colors. It's just gorgeous. So I definitely recommend Viridian for sure. Okay, so I, I paused in between these to just label some of these. I didn't want to lose track of what was what. What I've mixed and swatched now is Serpentine Green, which is another Primatech color, which is a ground stone. This one granulates also, and it'll separate to like a burnt red There'll be flecks of burnt red in this one, which is so beautiful. You get a really earthy tone, but I love it mixed with the phthalo turquoise. Normally serpentine green is more of a yellow gold green. The next color will be green gold. This is another one that is um, kind of more of a yellow green. Look how pretty this is mixed with phthalo turquoise. You get a really bright green almost similar to the second color we mixed with, which was with the Hansa yellow. This is not quite as bright. This one looks a little more natural where the Hansa yellow color was, it's more of a 1980s neon green kind of color. Green gold is another convenience color. It's actually mixed of three different pigments and the convenience colors are there so that if you need a lot of green, you don't have to continuously mix it for a project. You already have it pre-mixed for you. This is Pyroline Green. Pyroline Green is absolutely on my top 12. It's actually in my top five. Pyroline Green mixes beautifully with everything. And it's a way that you can quickly neutralize color. So if you want less of a 1980s vibrant palette and more of a neutralized palette, like if you guys watched my video where I painted the gnomes, it was the four watercolor brush mistakes to avoid. I'll link it in the top right hand corner. Several of the colors that I mixed were with pyroline green and it just creates beautiful colors. So this is yellow ochre. It's another one of my favorites. It's an earth tone yellow and that one too granulates beautifully and kind of does a little bit of separation. It creates beautiful colors. This is transparent red oxide, which creates like a really interesting, 
I feel like this color would be perfect for mushrooms, like particularly the shadows underneath the caps of mushrooms. That's another one that kind of separates out with its granulation and it granulates into two different tones. It's, it's really pretty, you guys. Um, this is Raw Umber Violet, another one of my favorites. That was the other color that I mixed my palette with for those gnomes. Just a beautiful color. It's another one that'll neutralize your colors really quickly and easily for you. And this is Neutral Tint. Um, and to be honest, I don't use this color very much. So I'm not sure if this will stay in my palette or if I'll replace it with one of the two extra colors that I have because I tend to mix my own grays. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this color very much. I still haven't decided. It did make a beautiful color for this. I have two more colors in another palette that I wanna swatch. The first one is Burnt Umber and the other one is Quinacridone Gold. So Quinacridone Gold may replace the neutral tint in my palette. The first color I'm mixing is Burnt Umber, and actually when you mix Thalo Turquoise with Burnt Umber, you get a color that's very similar to Pureline Green. So if you have those two, maybe you don't need Pureline Green. For me, I have to have it. It's gorgeous. I need it. And this last one is Quinacridone Gold. This one absolutely has to be in my palette, and that might end up in my top 12 colors. So there are our 30 mixtures plus our phthalo turquoise. So we've got the finished thing here. Once this dries, I want to shade the Zentangle because right now they look pretty flat. And so I just want to create a finished piece. And I'm going to start with some shading. So I start by adding graphite and then I will draw out that graphite with a paper stump or a tortillon. Unfortunately, I didn't tape all of that. So sorry. I'll remember to do that next time. And here I'm just adding some weight to the inside corners of the halibut that we did. This just adds a little more depth and dimension. I don't want to shade those areas because I want my watercolor swatch to stay true and not get muddy with graphite. So here it is all shaded. This is the finished piece. I'll pick this up and show you some close-ups and then I'll also have pictures, high resolution pictures of this on my blog post. I'll have the blog post listed down below in case there were colors that you were really interested in and you, and you wanted to mix it on your own so that you have that as a guide. Here's where we started today, you guys. And a couple people have asked me if I would sell like the digital version of this or a printed version. If I get enough requests for that, it's definitely something that I would look into. I certainly would not be able to do it from the journal because I don't think that would scan very well. And I'll have to figure out how to get that to you guys and just the logistics of it, I need to look into that. So if you are interested in purchasing something like this, let me know. Also talk to me about sizes. This page is five and a half by about 17 and I feel like that would be difficult for you guys to print if um, you just had a digital version. Part three of this series is paint with me. So we didn't go through all this mixing not to use these paints, we've gotta use them. So I will actually freehand sketch this balloon flower from a real photograph on screen. And then I will paint it with the colors that we just mixed. And I am totally new to this, you guys. I've maybe drawn three or four flowers in my entire life. So we will just learn together and I'll share with you what parts I feel like were really successful and where I think I could do better next time and what I learned from this sketch and paint session. If you guys got value out of this video today or you learned something new, please hit that like and subscribe button. And thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you soon with more inspiration.